It's no secret that Mexico has been plagued by a vast array of drug trafficking cartels that have spread fear and violence throughout the region. One such cartel is the infamous Cartel de Jalisco Nueva Generación, or the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. They're relatively young and have only come into the limelight in recent times. This organized crime organization was a part of the Milenio Cartel and is the second most influential cartel in Mexico, second only to the Sinaloa Cartel. The hallmarks of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel are the extreme use of violence and aggressive use of kidnappings to achieve their goals. Arms are a big part of the cartel and they do not shy away from extreme use of them. They are led by Nemesio Oseguero Cervantes, popularly known as El Mencho. While groups like the Sinaloa Cartel focus exclusively on drug trafficking, the Jalisco Cartel spreads its wings a little further dipping its hands into everything from human trafficking to crude oil bunkering and everything else in between. So how do they manage to operate in Mexico with the level of success that they have? Honestly, pure brute force. The Jalisco cartel cannot be reasoned with and they see every obstacle in their path as one that must be eliminated no matter the cost and they apply this principle to anyone with extreme prejudice. A politician starts to push for politics that will affect their operations, kidnap or kill him. Law enforcement officers come in for an arrest, have a shootout. Someone betrays the cartel, eliminate them. Everywhere the Jalisco cartel goes, a trail of blood follows, and their impunity and total disregard for just about everyone is quite honestly frightening. Training to get in is tough and very focused, and they operate in perhaps the most militarized way we've ever seen a crime syndicate behave before. What's even more frightening is the fact that they do not seem to have any fear of anything at all daring to do some of the most despicable crimes. From mass murder to cannibalism, the Jalisco cartel has it all. Although the cartel came out publicly in just 2011, it has quickly become the bane of the existence of just about every other criminal organization in Mexico. It basically started up declaring wars on every rival group in the country, including the infamous and influential Sinaloa cartel. Surprisingly, they've managed to carve out a space for themselves in Mexico and have spread all through managing to largely defeat rival group Los Cetas in the process. They're currently in 23 of Mexico's 32 states. That's massive when you consider just how young they are. Obviously, this has drawn a lot of attention from law enforcement to the cartel, and just about everyone wants a piece of them. In fact, the DEA has a $10 million reward for anyone who can provide information leading to Nemesio Osegura Cervantes' arrest. This is the biggest bounty the DEA has on a single person. That's crazy. Now let's take a look at what the major differences in operations are between the CJNG and the Sinaloa cartel. Notwithstanding how violent and explosive the Jalisco cartel has been, the Sinaloa cartel remains the biggest and most influential criminal organization in Mexico. They are way more reserved, and while they are also capable of violent outbursts, they're usually reserved and calculative. The Jalisco cartel, on the other hand, is more erratic and unpredictable. There's also a difference in the scope of their operations. Sinaloa deals exclusively in drug trafficking. It's what they do and they do it quite well. Jalisco has more variety in its operations. They not only also deal in drugs and to a wider range of drugs, but they also bunker crude oil, traffic women and children, participate in assassinations, violent hijackings, kidnappings, amongst others. Again, another difference is that while Sinaloa tends to focus on taking over all sorts of businesses completely, the CJNG focuses on pure taxation. They don't care much about aspects of production or providing of goods or services, just that businesses in the area that are under their control pay taxes they impose unfailingly. There are also efforts to stop the spread of the syndicate to neighboring Guatemala, from where people fear it will overrun Middle America and continue to spread its empire of violence and bloodshed. At the moment, they are allying with Guatemalan drug lords in a bid to consolidate their strengths in the area. This is scary news, and there is quite the public outrage about it. Liking the video so far? Why don't you drop a like? It really helps the channel. Also, let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. How much of a threat do you think they are? So, back to Jalisco. So what hope does the government have to overcome this group, particularly considering their pension for violence that usually involves civilian casualties? Well, at the moment, the Mexican government is struggling to gain a hold of the drug trafficking problem in the country. 
Already, they had their hands pretty full before the origin of Jalisco, and so it's pretty obvious that they are certainly not pleased that they have yet another cartel to deal with, and a very violent one at that. It has made efforts to crack down its operations, but with little success. Again, this is a result of the militarization of the group and the tactics they employ. The Jalisco cartel really is a well-drilled, well-coordinated group that's quite adept in the use of force, so regular policing simply isn't enough to hold them back. But is there a way that the Mexican government can deal with this menace with very minimal risk to civilians? Special operations are already one way the government is hoping to tackle the Jalisco cartel, and already a few arrests and busts have been made that have affected the group. The issue is that the cartel manages to not only recover but expand, and so perhaps more intense and unconventional tactics are needed in the fight against the cartel. Another thing that could help is international cooperation. Already, the Mexican government works hand-in-hand -hand with the US government and has received intelligence and human resources from them. It has worked quite well, and a fair number of arrests and incarcerations made so far have been multinational efforts. But perhaps the time has come for the US and other international bodies to take on a more hands-on approach. Of course, the main problem with this is that there is the worry that it would undermine the sovereignty of the Mexican government and could lead to a new form of instability in the area. It is worth considering as an option, though. It should be stated that there is the fact that one of the, in fact, perhaps the biggest threat to the Jalisco cartel is the Jalisco cartel itself. As explosive as they have been, one of the main driving forces behind their success has been unity and coordination. But just as successful as they've been together, they might be just as implosive if there were to be internal discord within the group. Having two or more different factions that disagree would lead to an all-out war within itself, which could see the organization consume itself in the very violence that it meets out to everyone else. This is one aim the government will be hoping to make by taking out the leaders of the cartel. With leadership vacuums come the rise of ambition and the struggle for power. This looks to be one of the more desirable ways for the cartel to meet an end, but at the moment, this sadly does not seem likely. For now, however, the Mexican people continue to be plagued by the Jalisco New Generation cartel and seem hopeful that one day the cartel's menace over the land will come to an end. Well, that's all we have for you for now. We hope you enjoyed the video as much as we enjoyed making it for you. We make more content just like this, so don't forget to subscribe. Also, turn on notifications to get alerted to freshly uploaded videos just like this from us. We hope you have a wonderful time, and we'll see you real soon.